أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم قال لمن حوله ألا تستمعون قال ربكم ورب آبائكم الأولين قال إن رسولكم الذي أرسل إليكم لمجنون قال رب المشرق والمغرب وما بينهما إن كنتم تعقلون قال لئن اتخذت إلها غيري لأجعلنك من المسجونين قال أولو جئتك بشيء مبين رب شحن صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي فالحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ثم أما بعد Once again everyone السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته uh, where I left you off, we were inside the court of Fir'aun and everybody around him is starting to become more impressed with Musa alayhi salam and this is frustrating him. So he says to everybody around him, قَالَ لِمَنْ حَوْلَهُ أَلَا تَسْتَمِعُونَ Did you not just hear what he said? Are you not listening to what he's saying carefully? He's insulting me and you're not standing up for me. And now as he's getting frustrated with his crowd, Musa alayhi salam almost pretends that he is not hearing any of it, he's going to continue to respond to his mistake question. Ma Rabbul Alameen, what master of all peoples, of all nations? Musa alayhi salam continues to describe Allah. And he says, Qala Rabbukum wa Rabbu Aba'ikum al Awaleen. He said, Your master and the master of your earliest ancestors. This is also a strategic response. First of all, your master is not this man sitting there. He's talking to the crowd. Kum is plural for the entire crowd. You guys, that's not your master. And by the way, your ancient ancestors, nobody has ancestors that are gods. My God is the God of all of your ancestors. Rabbukum wa Rabbu abaikum al awwaleen. Musa alayhi salam is going non-stop, not being phased by what he's saying. This is teaching us something very powerful, something I'll reinforce also as I, as I go through these ayat. There is going to be all kinds of allegations and propaganda made about Islam. We, however, have been given a message. That message is Allah's book. That's what the message is. We stick to it. And we speak it. And we don't get distracted by what's being said. We stay on message and we stay on point. What we have to say is what we have to say. It doesn't move. You know, it doesn't budge. Musa alayhi salam unintimidated continues to introduce the people around him, around Fir'aun to Allah. And Fir'aun can't take it. So now Fir'aun understands this is not a battle between him and Musa. He understands this is a battle for the crowd. Who's going to win the crowd? So he goes after the crowd now. He's no longer going after Musa, he's going after the crowd. His, his own people. He says to them, قَالَ إِنَّ رَسُولَكُمُ الَّذِي أُرْسِلَ إِلَيْكُمْ لَمَجْنُونَ He says, this, listen to the transition carefully. Your messenger over here, I'm telling you, no doubt, this messenger of yours, the one who's been sent to you, he's crazy. First phrase he used was Rasulakum, which means your messenger. When we say Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is our messenger, what does that mean? We have accepted him as our messenger. When he turns to his people and says, your messenger over here, he's actually acknowledging that it seems like they're already convinced of him. He's already seceding defeat. The one who's been sent to you, and by the way, in it is something else. He's messenger for you, not for who? Not for me. The one who's sent to you. He's not sent to me. But apparently he's been sent to you. He will never accept that the message is for him. <laughs> he can't accept that. And, says, and then he adds, this messenger of yours that apparently has been sent to you. He's insane. I'm telling you, he's insane. He's crazy. You see, first making him feel bad didn't work. You know, saying that I'm covering for you, فَعَلْتَ فَعْلَتَكَ الَّتِي فَعَلْتَ didn't work. Then later on, dismissing the message itself, Ah, oh, what master of the world? What Rabbul Alameen? Didn't work. Now you go for the next thing in propaganda, in winning an argument. You can call it character assassination. Dismiss someone's personality. Instead of their message, you go after their personality. Their personal life, their flaw, there's something in their character, or something in their physical disability or whatever, you know? Like you know in previous election campaigns in the United States, they went after Obama's birth certificate. You know, that's, this is what you do. You don't, you're not, you're not going to challenge policies or anything else, you'll go after something else, you see? 
And that's, the, that's just one example because I'm from there, but every, pol every politician does this. Every corrupt politician at least does this. They want to find something in their opponent's personal life or make an accusation about their personal life. So he says, this man's insane, he's possessed by a jinn. That's why he's talking like this. Dismiss him, don't listen to him. Musa salam is not interested in defending himself, by the way, I'm not insane, you're the one who doesn't make any sense, you've already put in, your foot in your mouth three times already, so who's insane? He doesn't say any of that, he's not interested in defending himself. He doesn't need to be distracted with dispelling notions about who he is. He knows who he is, Allah knows who he is. He doesn't need to do that. What does he do instead? قَالَ رَبُّ الْمَشْرِقِ وَالْمَغْرِبِ وَمَا بَيْنَهُمَا my master is the master of the east, the west, and everything in between. Notice three times now. It was Rabbu Samawati wal Ardi wa ma bayna huma in kuntum muqinin. Rabbukum wa Rabbu abaikum wal awaleen. Rabbu al mashriqi wal maghribi wa ma bayna huma in kuntum taqilun. Over and over again? Why? He's staying on the message. You asked what Rabbu al alameen. I'm still answering the question. <laughs> I mean, you haven't said anything else that should change my subject. You're talking to the crowd, telling them I'm insane, but I'm actually sticking to what you asked, answering your question comprehensively. And what an answer. The master of the east and the master of the west. I told you to them, God was the sun. And east and west are only understood as east and west because of the sun. So when you say master of east and master of west, you're the master of where the sun rises and where the sun sets. And by the way, what it falls on, the land is already included. When you say east and west, so again, it's going after their theology, their religious belief, and it's also going after the politics that came from that religious belief. The land belongs to Allah. And so he turns to the crowd and says another insulting thing about Fir'aun implicitly. What does he say? In kuntum ta'aqilun. If in fact you people are going to think, if you want to think, because he's not capable of thinking, but if you guys want to think about it, if you understand what I'm saying, and you could even argue here, I, I'm inclined to think he, at this point, Musa alayhi salam is actually calling for a coup. He's saying, look, east and west belongs to Allah, if you get what I'm saying. Guys, you see what I'm saying to you right now? Because, I mean, we're all in this room, we could take care of this problem right away. <laughs> he could get dethroned right there, can't he? Isn't it amazing that Musa alayhi salam had no weapon, had no army, had no massive media behind him, had no millions of dollars, had no other support, had no backers? had no business support, had no financial support, had no political support, had no outside kingdom supporting him. All he had was clarity of his message that Allah gave him. And now Fir'aun is scrambling, sitting in his throne. He's shaking, sitting in his throne, trying to win over not the nation, the people who work for him inside his throne. He can't control them anymore. Isn't that something incredible? SubhanAllah, just ponder over what just happened here. And he's just, and only he's crazy, don't listen to him. <laughs> It's, it's showing how desperate he's become. And Musa is some calm, calm and cool. Yeah, master of the east and the west, and everything in between, if you guys understand what I'm getting at. Fir'aun knows he, is, he has lost the battle of words. He can no longer argue with this man. This debate is over. So he now has to resort to force. He says, If you dare take a god other than myself, if you dare accept a God other than myself, I will make sure you are added to those who are already in prison. I will include you among the prisoners. I'm gonna throw you in jail if you go on, basically, right? By the way, this already says he's already thrown people in jail, which means there have been people who tried to have some kind of uprising against him before, right? That's already, that's already indicated. The other thing that's indicated here is, no more words from you. I can't tolerate any more words, you go to jail. You would think now Fir'aun has a power that Musa doesn't have, alayhi salam. Fir'aun has soldiers, they can arrest him, they can throw him in a cell, they can silence him, you'll never hear from Musa again. But actually this, this more than anything else is the defeat of Fir'aun. This ayah is the defeat of Fir'aun. Let me tell you something. When two people are arguing, a disagreement about some, some truth, two plus two is four. There's a little kid in the playground, he's a little short and skinny, and there's a big kid who's super senior. He's been in the second grade like five times now, <laughs> you know? And the little kid says, two plus two is four. And the big one, no, I put five on the test, it's five. No, it's actually four, look, two, two, four. It's five. Okay, five. 
When you have to use force, that actually means you didn't have anything else. You didn't have words, you didn't have reason, you didn't have evidence, you certainly didn't have truth, so the only thing you could do is use what? Force. By the way, that is a universal principle. That's a universal principle. You are having an argument with your child. Your teenage boy. He's arguing with you. You get upset, you use your hands. You know what that means? You're incapable of words. That's what that means. You're not capable of words. You lost that argument. You didn't win anything. And you lost his respect too. Because he knows he, does, he doesn't know what to say, so he hits me. That's what he's going to think. Th this is the same thing with abusive police. When an abusive police officer is questioned about what they're doing, what do they do? Excessive force. Because they're, they're they're, they've been cornered. When you take people who do wrong, and you corner them with evidence, with truth, then they lash out with force. And that actually proves that they have no truth. That is the ultimate proof. This is Firaun's show of weakness. Oh, he couldn't shut him up, so he had to throw him in jail. By the way, him being thrown in jail, who are people going to be impressed with, who are right now in the inner circle of Firaun? Who are they going to be impressed with? Musa. He's actually sealing his own deal. He says, if you don't take a god other than me, I will make sure you are among those that have been thrown in jail. Musa knows, alayhi salam, I cannot use any more words. Because if I do, what's going to happen? Jail time. So Musa alayhi salam realizes, okay, fine. No more words. That's good. I made my point already. He says, Even if I were to show you something that clarifies everything, how about I don't talk anymore, I just show you something. I came on behalf of the ultimate king, I could show you something that I, he sent with me. Firaun's looking at him like, I don't see a suitcase. I don't, you don't check any luggage with, me, with you. You've got this brother of yours, and you've got a stick in your hand, what are you going to show me? So Firaun's very confident that finally, Musa is backing off. Maybe he's thinking, oh, he's going to go run and get something. Finally, I have the upper hand, Firaun is thinking. So he says, Fatibi, go bring it, bring it, yes, go ahead. Let's see what you have. In kunta minas sadiqeen. If in fact you're going to show something. You're just trying to get out of jail. That's why you said, oh, well, let me show you something. No, 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 please. Let's see it. Firaun's thinking, finally got him. Finally got him. He's very happy about this. And what does Musa alayhi salam do? فَأَلْقَى عَصَاهُ Musa alayhi salam threw his staff. Threw the, the stick. فَإِذَا Then all of a sudden, هِيَ ثُعْبَانِ It turned into a python. A python is not just a snake, it's a snake that can swallow a child. It's a massive snake. It, there, there are descriptions of this in the Qur'an. Hayya, thu'ban. Hayya means it has fangs. It can take your life. That's what hayya means. And then Allah describes this thu'ban, which is a massive snake that can swallow. It's like one of those, like, what's that, Harry Potter snakes. <laughs> and I want you to understand what's just happened. It's not just a snake, like, ooh, snake. If you guys saw in this crowd a snake that is two feet, this little, just go like that. What would happen in this crowd? Do you understand? I don't even have to give the example of a snake. One time I was teaching in a hall and there was brother's side, sister's side, and there was a cockroach that went in front of the sister's side. Not into the sister's side, in front of the sister's side. This was like Yawmul Hashab. You have people running towards the door, Allah, like, you know, like. A little <laughs> man. Can you imagine in enclosed quarters a large deadly animal that moves quickly? Hayatun Tasa Quran describes, right? A deadly animal that runs. It doesn't just sit in place like calm. No, 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 no. It's running around. What's going to happen in that room? People are gonna quit their job. The guy who's holding this beer is like, ah! And he's, just, he's running out. The guy with the fan has thrown the fan away. The soda has poured on Firaun's face. God knows what's happening. People are standing on their... Even Firaun must have been up on his seat. Like, <laughs> he's a security guard in front of me. This is incredible what's just happened. The, the room is now in chaos. The court is now in chaos. Firaun's own inner castle is now owned by Musa alayhi salam. It is owned by Musa alayhi salam. As soon as this staff turns into a snake, everybody's terrified. There's no more fear of Fir'aun. There's only fear of this snake right now. So he says, فَإِذَا هِيَ ثُعْبَانٌ مُبِينٌ It became, very, uh, by the way, Mubin means clarifying. It became clear to everyone that there is in fact a God on, who, on whose behalf this man speaks. 
Everybody in the room now knew. And as that was happening, وَنَزَعَ يَدَهُ He took his, in the chaos of all of that, he took his hand out. فَإِذَا هِيَ بَيْضَى And all of a sudden the hand started, it turned completely white. لِلنَّاظِرِينَ For people to stare at, suggesting people couldn't, st- what is that? What happened to his hand? Watch out for snake, wait! <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know, what's happened here is, up until this point, all ears were on Musa. And now, all eyes are on Musa. It's like he's taken over mentally. He's taken over the crowd completely. فَإِذَا هِيَ ثُرْبَانٌ مُبِينٌ وَنَزَعَ يَدَهُ فَإِذَا هِيَ بَيْضَاءٌ لِلنَّاظِرِينَ Fir'aun is in... I don't know, what is he going to do now? How is he going to handle this situation? How does this come to an end? He realizes there are lots of people in the room. There are high-level people and low-level people. The cleaners, the security guards, the fan guy, whatever. These are low-level people. But the generals, the ministers, the advisors, those are what? High-level people. Who ha- he has to make sure who remains loyal. He has to make a priority now. Who's, who, he, who does he need? The high-level people. Because if the high-level people get impressed with Musa salam, you're going to have a political situation. Because they will remove Fir'aun, won't they? So he calls the closest. Qala lil mala'i hawlahu. Notice the ayat are transitioning. Before it was qala li man hawlahu. He said to anybody around him, everybody around him, aren't you listening? Remember when he was frustrated? He talked to everybody. But now Allah says, qala lil mala'i hawlahu. He said to the generals, the chiefs, the ministers, the advisors. He said to them around him, inna hadha la sahirun alim. This guy really is a very knowledgeable magician. Uh, sir, you just called him insane two minutes ago. How is he insane and knowledgeable? Because I don't know any knowledgeable insane people. And to learn magic, you can't be insane. You have to be pretty smart to learn this stuff. Because he's pretty good. So which one is it? He's contradicting himself, isn't he? You know, you, Musa alayhi salam, stays on the same message. Fir'aun keeps changing his message, doesn't he? That is the nature of truth, the battle of truth and falsehood. We have to stay on the same message. They will come up with one attack, another attack, another attack, another attack, and some of their attacks will contradict other attacks. And they'll just end up dismantling themselves. People will literally, I've met people who've said, oh, I heard this criticism of Islam, and this criticism of Islam, and this criticism of Islam, and I said, man, these three cannot coexist because they contradict each other. That's why I started looking into Islam from Muslims themselves. And then I became Muslim. What they think is a propaganda against Islam, for whoever Allah wants to guide, becomes the road to Islam. That becomes the road to Islam. So now, here, he needs to gather his, his, his close generals, brings him in, and says something amazing. I told you the defeat has already begun. And the ultimate sign of that defeat is coming. يُرِيدُ أَنْ يُخْرِجَكُمْ مِنْ أَرْضِكُمْ بِسِحْرِهِ فَمَاذَا تَأْمُرُونَ He's a really good magician, let me tell you. He's a very knowledgeable magician. He wants to get you kicked out of your land. Wait, hold on, sir. What you mean, my land? All this time you've been saying what? Whose land is this? My land. That's all he says. أَلَيْسَ لِي مُلْكُ مِصْرَ وَهَذِهِ الْأَنْهَارُ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِي Don't I alone own the kingdom of Egypt? Don't these rivers flow beneath my feet? That's how he talks. All of a sudden, he gathers the generals and says, Guys, this is our land. We all belong here, don't we? And he's a threat to our nation. He wants to get us kicked out of your land. Why don't you tell me what to do? Mother ta'murun. Fir'aun asking someone else what to do? Fir'aun, should, Fir'aun never asks anybody else's suggestions. He's obsessed with whose? His own. There must be people in the audience that must have cried. You've never asked me anything. (laughs) (laughs) Why did he ask them? He asked them because he wants them to feel valued. Fir'aun never had the desire to make anybody feel valued before. But right now he needs them. And he cannot control them with fear. He can only control them by making them feel important. 
And in order to do that, he has to make himself less important. And so he comes down from his ana rabbukum wal a'la and says, hey guys, this is your land. And he's a threat to your land. Why don't you tell me what to do? Mada ta'murun? Amazing. Musa alayhi salam in the course of this, these few minutes has actually reduced the political power of Fir'aun in the high, at the highest level. At the highest level. He's no longer even a god to himself. That's already been dismantled. So mada ta'murun? So they got really like, yeah, yeah, of course, boss. We'll help you out here. So they said, Arjih, qalu arjih. They said, don't arrest him. Let him go. Give him time. Why did they say let him go? Because they're smart too. If you let him go, then as opposed to arresting him, if you arrest him, there's a security guard, there's a, you know, there's the cleaner, there's the, everybody else, they're gonna go home and tell the story. And if he goes into prison, he's gonna talk to the prison guards. And the prisoners. And if he's so influential, he can influence ministers and governors. Pretty soon there's going to be a riot in the prison and they're going to break free and we're all going to be dead. Don't send him to prison. That's even more dangerous. Because he's probably going to find people of like minds anyway that, that are, want to stand up against the, the, the regime. Don't send him there, it's too dangerous. Just give, let him go. Just let him go. But we're going to fix this problem. Arjihu wabath. And let his brother go too. But at the same time, all of the cities that Egypt controls, go send your recruiters, gatherers. Go send your best recruiters there. They will bring you every single expert magician they can find. Every magician that has serious you know, uh, expertise and experience, they'll bring all of them. From all the different cities, all the different styles of magic, We'll bring them all together, we'll put a dream team together of the greatest magicians and then together we will make posters of them and we'll blast them on you know, social media. These are the heroes of the land that are here to protect our national interest against the Islamic threat of Moses. You know, and they shall defend our land and show you the true meaning of what it means to be a patriot. These are, this is a threat to our homeland security and all of it. That's what they're gonna do. Why don't you bring these recruiters over here? And these best magicians over here. So immediately he took that suggestion, let Musa alayhi salam go. By the way, when Musa is gone, alayhi salam, you think he's sitting quietly? He's like, oh, I wonder what's, when my next appointment is. No, 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 no. Musa alayhi salam is busy talking to the entire nation. And if you think what happened inside the castle is bad, now the message of Musa alayhi salam is spreading all over the region. Everywhere, people are getting to hear. And did people get to hear the embarrassing thing that happened inside the castle? Yeah. That night the security guard went home and told his wife what happened. The next morning all of Egypt knew. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's talking about how Firaun, like Firaun walks by and somebody just as a joke says, Snake, he goes, ah, you know. <laughs> you know, he's humiliated. His public ratings have gone down. He's become the object of ridicule, you understand? And Musa alayhi salam has kind of become a people's champion, a hero. Wait, he talked about freeing us? Wow, he stood up for us? And he called Firaun an idiot, basically, and got away with it? How did he do that? He's amazing. I want to go listen to what he says. And now people are becoming more and more fans of Musa alayhi salam. In the meantime, Firaun is gathering Fajumi as sahara the magicians that were all gathered for the meeting of a day. This is we learn other places in Quran. Allah says there's a Yomuz Zina, the day of festivities. I make an inappropriate joke whenever I come to the UK. You know, it's called we call it in America. We have it. In many countries have it Independence Day, right? They celebrate Independence Day. You guys don't have that because people get independence from your country, <laughs> right? So, <laughs> so you don't know the concept that well, but <laughs> but uh. You know, Independence Day is when you show your patriotism to the nation, the flags are waving, everybody's celebrating, there's a festival, there's like, like stalls and people are coming out, there's a parade and all of this crowd festivities, right? That's a day of, when the, day, the streets are decorated. That's why it's called Yom Zina, day of beauty, because the streets are decorated, people are decorated, it's, it's a fun day. So Fir'aun knows that that is the day, if I'm gonna stop this propaganda, I need to have the maximum crowd to crush Musa. So that everybody sees that this problem was finished. The only way to do that is to make sure that my 
countering, my counter second round of conflict with Musa happens in front of the biggest possible audience. I'm going to get the best magicians and I will use them to humiliate him in front of everyone. He wants to televise this. He wants to nationalize this. So we find in the Quran, but that, you know, in between the lines, there's lots of things in the Quran. In this time, people are less impressed with Fir'aun, right? And by the way, back then, you don't have a, like an Egypt flag or like a Pakistan flag. You have a Fir'aun flag. You're celebrating your god, Fir'aun. But are people feeling patriotic by this time? No. People actually see very, think of him much less. They think of him as weaker. Even the people close to him think of him differently. They've seen a weakness in him. So people are not motivated to celebrate that day like they normally are. So he had to send soldiers door to door, grabbing people and saying, hey, fun day is coming. You better come, bring the whole family. And this is actually mentioned in the Quran. وَقِيلَ لِلنَّاسِ هَلَنْتُمْ مُجْتَمِعُونَ And people were told, are you gathering or what? <laughs> it's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> so people had, because they had to make it look like the nation is gathered. Often, now, nowadays, by the way, there are, this happened in the United States a couple of times. There's, there's a massive rally happening against Sharia law. And you do a little bit of investigation, every attendee was paid a hundred bucks to show up. Like they didn't actually show up, it's artificial. In his case, it's a police state, he forces people to show up. They keep track. This happened, you know, there, there, there are places in Pakistan, other places in the Muslim world. I know some stories in Pakistan of corrupt politicians who want to have like a, a gathering, like a political speech, and they don't have enough followers, so they send their thugs into the village. And they take people's IDs. And they say, you come get it back at the, at the event. Because if you don't come get it back, we'll come get you. And they're sitting there clapping at the speech, like, it's all fake. This is what's happening here. This is, this is, you would think this is an ancient book talking about ancient times. This is talking about living political corruption. Living media propaganda. This happens even now. By the way, Fir'aun looks bad. So they need someone who looks good on behalf of the country. Who did they gather from all the different cities? The magicians. So they started declaring the magicians, heroes of the land that shall save the land on our great day of celebration. There are pictures of them, posters of them, talk about them, you know, YouTube videos about them. There's all this propaganda happening about these magicians. So much so that people started saying, Quran comments, لَعَلَّنَا نَتَّبِعُ sahara." إِنْ كَانُوا هُمُ الْغَالِبِينَ It looks like maybe we're gonna end up following the magicians if they win. In other words, when the magicians beat Musa, I think the government is going to belong to who? The magicians, because we don't see any press release from Fir'aun. He's afraid of snakes. All we see is these magicians in the media all the time. I think the party is shifting from a Fir'aun party to a what? Magician party. That's, that's a, is that what's happening? And Fir'aun keeps an eye on the media and what people are saying. So he's worried. I put these magicians up, but I think I put them too high. That's a problem for me. And now he can't kill them. Because if anybody gets close to political power, he can kill them. But he can't kill them because if he kills them, he he's becomes even worse. Because now to, to the entire nation, they're the heroes. You killed our heroes? Why did you do that? That doesn't make any sense. So he's stuck now. He, he keeps getting stuck in a... I feel bad for the guy, you know. <laughs> so he keeps getting stuck and now what does he do? He calls the magicians. فَلَمَّا جَاءَ Sahara. And the magicians also realize they become very popular. Magicians are smart. These guys are, they got more than just magic up their sleeve. Man, these guys, I'm impressed. They realized how much Fir'aun needs them. If anybody else, if, if it was a normal day and Fir'aun called a magician, do some tricks for me, pull a rabbit out of a hat. And he pulled it out of the hat and then said, uh, Sir, can I get paid now? Oh, oh you, oh, you want to get paid? Oh, uh, guard, go pay him. You know what would have happened to him, right? He would have lost his head. You don't go ask Pharaoh, sir, I want to get paid. But right now is the only time you've got Pharaoh's hand tied behind his back. If there was ever a time to make money out of the king, is this time. So these magicians come to the Pharaoh and say, could we speak to the Pharaoh, please? Yeah, of course, go ahead. Inna lana ajran. 
we, we, we are going to get paid for sure, right? If in fact we're going to win. I love this. Because I used to be a big fan of mafia movies. <laughs> They're basically mafia. Right? Look, I want to win this game, but something might go wrong. <laughs> you never know. I, I need a little motivation here. So uh, <laughs> how about we help each other out? <laughs> <You know? laughs> if we're going to win, we're surely getting paid, right? In any other scenario, Firaun would have what? Killed these guys. But he's stuck, so he says, Naam, yes. Wa innakum idan lamin al muqarrabin. But he gave them more than money. He said, if you do win, in that case, you will be among those that are brought very close to my administration. I will give you minister of kufr, governor of fitna. <laughs> like I will. I will give you all political positions. I will make you part of my cabinet. I will give you the vice presidency. Why is he offering them political positions? They didn't ask for political positions. They just wanted to get what? Paid. paid. Because he knows people outside are thinking that these guys are going to be running the country. Before they run in the election, offer them a vice presidency. Smart move, huh? So just, I'll give you good positions, don't worry. Don't even think about political career for yourself. I'll kill you. Just know that I'm going to give you a good cabinet position. Backdoor politics, isn't it? <laughs> On the outside, they say, we're trying to save the nation. On the inside, the only ones they want to save is themselves. That's what's happening here. So now, قَالَ لَهُمْ مُوسَى And so now they're motivated. Yes, sir, we will, we will, yes, we will take care of business. We will make sure, by the way, we'll learn later what's in between the lines here. Musa, Firaun told them, listen, I've been looking pretty bad in the public lately. Your job is not just to beat Musa, your job is to make me look good. So when you go out there and you beat him, you make sure you tell people that's because of Firaun. You make me look, give me credit. When you speak, they understand. So now the day of the battle comes. Qala lahum Musa. Musa actually took the first step and said, Al quma antum mulqun. Throw it is, whatever you're going to throw. Go ahead and throw it. So fa alqaw hiba lahum wa asiyahum. They threw their ropes and their rods. وَقَالُوا And they declared, بِعِزَّةِ فِرْعَوْنِ إِنَّا لَنَحْنُ الْغَالِبُونَ We declare by the glory of the Pharaoh, today we shall win. We are absolutely going to dominate by the glory of Fir'aun. See, they're making Fir'aun look good. So they have to do this whole drama. Musa alayhi salam, the way the Qur'an describes it in the surah is amazing. فَأَلْقَى مُوسَى عَصَاهُ when Musa, Then Musa alayhi salam threw his staff. I know you don't watch movies. But um, there's this movie that shaped my childhood, Rocky. <laughs> a Rocky movie has to go on for many rounds. You know, this is an epic battle, it's the last scene of the movie, so it better be like 20 rounds. You know, I must break you, you know, like that kind of thing. <laughs> so people are thinking, Musa versus the magicians, this is going to go on and on and on, back and forth. Oh, that was a good one. Oh, that was a good one. It's going to be a long match. Now, and they made all this glorious claim and this huge crowd is waiting. And they're looking for this epic battle. What happens? فَأَلْقَى مُوسَى عَصَاهُ Musa threw his staff. فَإِذَا Then immediately, هِيَا تَلْقَفُ مَا يَأْفِكُونَ It swallows everything they had come up with immediately. There's no time taken. It's moment, seconds, it's over. People are like, yay, ha! Huh? <laughs> just, <laughs> it's just over immediately, gone. فَإِذَا هِيَا تَلْقَفُ مَا يَأْفِكُونَ Now, the magicians, before anyone else, the magicians, they know magic. And they know that's no magic. Other people don't know magic. To them, that magic is cooler than that magic. But the one who knows magic knows that is no magic. He actually is Allah's messenger. The magicians were thrown into sajda. Quran describes it with you know, al-maf'ul alladhi lam yusamma fa'iluhu, the, the passive verb, what that means in simple English, is it's like the magicians couldn't even help themselves, it's like some other force pushed, smacked them down into sajda. Like they couldn't even stand up. فَأُلْقِيَ السَّحَرَةُ سَاجِدِينَ They were thrown into sajda. Like they couldn't even help themselves. And Fir'aun is confused. Is, are, are you preparing for round two? Is this part of the 
Is, is this part of the drama? What, what, what are you going to do now? Are you pulling something out of the ground? What, what's happening here? They come up and say, Amanna bi Rabbil Alameen. We have now believed in the master of all nations. But when they say that, Fir'aun would say, Yeah, I know. <laughs> right here, master of all nations, Rabbil Alameen. Wouldn't he say that? So they make it further clearer. No, 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 genius. Rabbi Musa wa Harun. <laughs> the master of Musa and Harun, if in case you're confused. This entire time, millions were spent. Military was spent. Resources were spent. Propaganda was spent. Time was spent to prop the magicians in that place. To make them the spokespeople for all of Egypt. People were forced to say, to say, listen to the magicians. Listen to them, listen to them. They are the heroes of this land. They are the ones who have the best interest of Egypt in mind. And those same magicians, you could never have paid for that kind of a stage. Fir'aun paid out of his own pocket for that stage. And put them all the way up here. A stage that if Musa salam wanted, he could never have had himself. He could never have gathered that many people. Actually, people were forced to gather there, weren't they? Fir'aun forced people to gather there. And in that gathering, Allah made those magicians say his message, not Fir'aun's message. He paid for the da'wah of Islam. <laughs> he paid for it. Completely financed it. We believe in the master of, of Musa and Harun. We're Muslim. Fir'aun doesn't know what to do now. This already happened inside his court. Now it's happened in front of hundreds of thousands of people. How is he supposed to contain this situation? He says, Amantum lahu? Qabla an adhana lakum? You dare accept what he was saying before I gave you permission? Oh, innahu lakabirukum alladhi allamakum usihir. I see now, he is your ringleader. He's your gang leader. He's your chief. He's the one who taught you magic. That's why he's your sensei. That's why he defeated you. Ah. Fala sawfa ta'lamun. You, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you very soon. I'll show you what happens when you scheme against me. Fir'aun knows this is a lie or no? He gathered them from different cities. They trained in all these different places. He knows all of this is a lie, but he's quick on his feet. He's quick. He needs to come up with a quick propaganda. So this propaganda is, Musa is the biggest magician, and these are all his students. And they all scheme this together. I will cut your right arms and your left legs, or your left arms and your right legs, and then I'm going to crucify you, hang you in public streets, so people can see your bodies rot. This is the threat he gives them. But actually you have to understand, he is not threatening the magicians. Who is he actually threatening? The public. The public. You see, the magicians are gone. He now needs to control, like remember he needed to control the court? Now he needs to control the crowd. And the crowd will see dead bodies hanging on poles, and they'll think twice about taking shahada. They'll think twice about listening to Musa. This is what I'm going to do now. When they hear this, they should have been apologizing to me. No, 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 okay, okay, okay. Back to you, sir. We're going to get some more ropes. Nope, they said, La, Baid. No problem at all. That's not an issue at all. Go ahead. Inna ila rabbina munqalibun. We're only going to be returning back to our Rabb anyway. Away from you to our Rabb. This is immediate transformation of the Sahara. These magicians. So they were smart not only in the worldly sense, but smart also in the spiritual sense. They understood now what, what it is. And by the way, how did they know there's an akhirah? It's a question, right? Because they didn't learn about akhirah. Or did they? When you study, when you're going to get ready for a match, like a boxing match or a football match, what does your coach make you do? He makes you study your opponent. This is how their offense works. This is how their defense works. Look, look out for this one. Look out for that one. Look out for this punch. Look out for this hook. You know, when he gets tired, he tends to do this, isn't it? Who have the magicians been studying all this time? They've been studying Musa Harun. And when they've been studying Musa, they've been listening to his message. 
They've been listening, they've been, they've heard about the miracle itself. That's why they made similar things, ropes and rods to make them look like snakes. So they've heard all of it, but it never clicked. They knew all of it. They knew the whole message, but it never clicked. But when they saw the miracle with their own eyes, all that message they were, heard, they were learning to destroy him became the message they learned to accept his message. SubhanAllah. There will be people today even that will study Islam to destroy Islam. And then those very people, one day it will click in their hearts and they will become ulama of Islam. There, there are people like that. You know? And so now, inna natma'u, these are still the, the magicians talking publicly, and this is where we'll conclude, inshallah. Inna natma'u an yaghfira lana rabbuna khatayana. We're only hopeful that our master will forgive our mistakes. Defying you is no mistake, defying him was the mistake. Disobeying him was the mistake. And what's, what's the one thing we can do to make up for our mistake? An nakuna awwal al mu'mineen, that we will be the first ones to believe. When they say we will be the first ones to believe, what are they saying to the crowd? Why don't you become the second ones to believe? They're encouraging everybody in the land to take shahada. Everybody in the land. Subhanallah. This, I wanted to share this with you in order to show you something. The message of this deen is more powerful than media. It's more powerful than an army. It's more powerful than money. It's more powerful than any propaganda. Musa alayhi salam had no resources. Fir'aun had every resource, every resource. And Allah used all of his resources, used, used him to do his work. That's Allah's plan. Don't be frustrated by the media, by the resources of those who hate Islam, those who propagate messages against our deen. Don't be frustrated with that. Allah will use all of it against them if one condition is met. If we stay committed to our message. Musa alayhi salam stayed committed to his message. When you can do that, everything else will turn around. Everything else will turn around. This is, this is the plan of Allah Azza wa Jalla. And by the way, at the end of it all, Fir'aun's, the, the call to Fir'aun was, let the Israelites go. Did he let them go? No. He's now been, you know, completely delegitimized to his own people, publicly humiliated. And by the way, this was the beginning of the conflict between him and Musa. This is not the end of the conflict. People don't understand. This is the beginning of the conflict. From here, there's sinin. There are years in which this debate continued. And Fir'aun continued to weaken. And then the nine signs came. They were going to kill all the Israelites now because they didn't want a revolution. And Allah hit the, hit the land of Egypt with so many heavy signs like they were flooded with locusts and, you know, and, and, and frogs and things like that. And blood. There were many nine, the, the nine signs that are talked about. The nation became incapacitated. They were so they were dealing with so many, what you can call them natural or unnatural disasters, that they had no time to deal with the Israelites militarily. They were just dealing with one crisis after another, after another, after another. Years. Bisinin. <laughs> Quran will mention by for years. And eventually they were so humbled that the generals and Firaun, they, they, they the generals came to Musa alayhi salam and says, you know, can you just ask your Rabb to give us some relief? Can you just go ask your God, what we had enough? Which almost sounds like they're ready to become Muslim, right? That's in Surah Al-A'raf. We, okay, we're done. Okay, you know what? You win. You win. And then the signs would stop, they would go back to Kufr. They would go back. And then they, when the signs stopped, then finally Fir'aun said, you know what? I, I no longer have any love for Musa. Let me kill him myself. Zaruni yaqtul Musa. Let me kill Musa myself. I'll take care of it. And that's when Allah decided to let the Israelites pass. And Allah gave them, gave them opening. What I, the reason I shared that summary of the, the rest of the story with you is to help you know something. We can win the battle of da'wah. But a zalim, an oppressor, a murderer, a killer will always be a killer. Even if he's delegitimized. As a matter of fact, when they are delegitimized, when you show that they're evil and they're corrupt, when, they're, when you show that they're unjust, then the only way for them to hold on to their power is by spilling blood. That's the only way. And the only way to hold on to that power, once they have spilled blood, is to spill more blood. Because the moment they stop spilling blood, they will be brought to justice. They don't sleep at night. They kill hundreds of thousands of people. They don't sleep at night. They have nightmares. Quran will describe, you would think everybody else was afraid. Fir'aun was, you know, was the one who wasn't afraid. No, 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 no. Allah Azza wa Jal will describe in Surah Al-Qasas, you know, that Allah will show them what they were afraid of. Allah will show them what they were afraid of. Why? Why did He say that to the, about them? You know, because they are in fact afraid. 
They are afraid of the crimes they've committed, how justice will come against them. And that will come. And that will come in its time. But we remain committed. And Allah Azza wa help will come. This is not a time to become hopeless. I know the, 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 the kind of anti-Muslim, anti-Islam rhetoric that is spreading like wildfire. Thank you very much, United States of America, Trump administration. That's spreading like wildfire all over the world, not just in Europe. You know, in Europe, we're seeing effects of it, obviously. But even when I traveled to other parts of the world, I saw it. I saw that, you know, extreme Buddhist elements in Sri Lanka are now more anti-Islam than they ever were before, and they have Trump posters. You know, this is happening. There's a, there's a sentiment brewing. But in the middle of all of that intimidation, that's when you come back to this book. That's when you come back to this book. You won't find any other protection other than this, Quran says. This, this is our protection. That's why we have to come back to this. These are, these are, these are not asatir al-awwaleen, stories of ancient times. This is guidance and inspiration and a strengthening of our hearts so that we can navigate this climate. May Allah Azza wa connect us and bond us to His word. And may Allah Azza wa continue to strengthen our iman and strengthen our commitment to Allah's word and our obedience and compliance with Him. May Allah Azza wa forgive our mistakes. I'm so very grateful I got a chance to see all of you uh, this evening. Unfortunately, unlike other times where I try to stay and answer as many questions as I can, I do have to uh, you know, uh, take part in other commitments, so I'm going to make my run quickly. But I do ask you for lots and lots of dua. As I travel, I'll be making special dua for all of you too. And um, I'm not promising you, but I can't help myself. Every time I come to London, I'm going to stop at ELM. I don't know. I, I can't help myself. Oh, barakallahu alaykum. As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.